Uh, our scripture is 2 Corinthians 6, 14, which is, Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with darkness? Our theme this year has been expounding these questions of divine interrogation. God, Christ, and our brethren in scripture have asked these questions as a teaching tool that is rather unique. Instead of just giving you the information, one has to ponder both sides of the question. What is the reasoning behind the question? And what is the resolution to the question? If information was just given to you, you'll miss out on the opportunity to feel the weight of importance of this knowledge. And you will also miss out on the appreciation you have towards the resolution of the problem. These questions are asked so that we may be able to savor every aspect of this understanding that we're about to partake of. But before we could talk about the resolution, first we must ask ourselves, why is the Apostle Paul asking this question? For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? There is an underlining tone of warning, expressing that these two will never mix. They do not go hand in hand they will not produce a profitable fruit together and will most likely cause more harm than good. They will be, there will be a reaction when these two are placed together and it's not a pleasant one. Righteousness and unrighteousness, light and darkness. Believers and unbelievers are complete opposites of one another. This may sound like common sense that these two groups of people are not one and the same, but I fear this obscure mindset did not stop at Corinth. To the disappointment of the labors of the Apostle Paul, this question was overlooked in today's society. The, the acceptance of this mixed group of people with varying degrees of interest in the holy things has caused a lot of destruction within the church and the painted image of Christ and those who call themselves Christians. At one time, those who were Christians were described as a holy, sober, upright, righteous people who gave their lives in Christ's name. However, the definition of a Christian nowadays has been described as a loving and accepting type of people who love the sinner and hate the sin, just like Christ did. That's one of the most accepted ideas, is that Christ loved the sinner, hated the sin, and dwelled with the scum of the earth. However, they don't seem to take into the account that Christ wasn't here for the people. But he was here to speak the Father's word. Mm -hmm. He was here to do the Father's work Amen. and fulfill the Father's will. Yes. He was not here so he could dwell with sin. And he was definitely not here to be a servant to men's fleshly desires. Amen. But in the eyes of the modern church and even of the Pharisees, this is what they believed Christ was doing. And to them, they didn't understand why the proclaimed son of God was dwelling not with God's chosen people. Christ didn't just fellowship with anyone. He fellowshiped with people in whom God was working within them. He worked with those who wanted to be worked with. He spoke to those who were receptive of the Father's teachings. He fed those who truly wanted to be fed, and he changed those who wanted to be changed. And those people were not all highly ranked Jews. Christ didn't waste any time in this earth trying to convince every doubting individual to believe in God or trying to heal every flaw in humanity or try to feed everyone who was hungry, for this is a tiring and a rather unprofitable work. There would be no fruit to reap if all the time was spent on stone-hearted people. If that's what Christ did, he would still be on this earth and nothing would have changed, for feeding the flesh changes nothing. Now feeding the spirit, on the other hand, will surely flourish. Flesh and spirit do not thrive together, for one will surely overcome the other. The only difference is that the spirit will always reap good fruit for the Father. Yes. Yeah. Flesh
flesh is like thorns to the spirit that would choke out the branches to the vine if you let it thrive within you or even for, in an assembly for that matter. This is why Christ has made it rather clear. Wherefore, if thy hand or thy foot offend thee, cut it off and cast thee them from thee. It is better for thee to enter into life maimed rather than having two hands or two feet than to be cast into everlasting fire. Let me just say that again. You are better off cutting off your own limbs than being hindered with anything that is offensive to God. That's how serious it is. With everything that you do or say or any relationship you have with people, this needs to be a consideration. Does this hinder my growth in the spirit? Does this prevent me from fellowshipping with the Lord? Will this become a burden to my soul? Or even do I need to cut this off? So my question is, what kind of fellowship do you seek? 